Hello, everyone, and welcome to Exploring Awesome. I am your host, hypnotist Jim Kellner, and uh, each episode I talk to uh, people that are doing awesome things, living an awesome life, and uh, I ask them to share their tips for us. This one specifically is aimed at uh, entrepreneurs, artists, small business owners, uh, actors, that sort of thing, uh, people who would like to increase their um public image, their public awareness, get people to, to know about them. And I know a lot of folks in that in those areas have a little bit of trouble. So I invited my good friend Larissa Long on the show. She's a publicist. She's been doing this for years. I'm going to let her take over and tell you about her. Hi, thank you so much, Jim. I'm excited. Uh, we've known each other for years in different circumstances, which is awesome. And uh, you know, I've been doing... Uh, public relations for about 17 years. Uh, I started out working in government, worked for different municipalities, I worked for the state, I worked for federal government, I've done, worked on political campaigns, and then the longer I worked for the government, the less I wanted to work for the government. So I decided <laughs> to, uh, to start working for myself, and now um, I kind of, I work with different clients who do everything from comedy to uh, television, you name it, authors, um, you know, just different people looking to spread whatever message they have. But what I particularly like to do is find people who try to spread, uh, spread good messages, things that could possibly, you know, change the world in a positive way. What was that? You said uh, you said something, you look for people that are what? That are trying to do something positive to change the world mm. in a positive way. Nice, nice. And uh, Larissa is also doing some stuff in the uh, in increasing. Oh, and I do want to let you all know, I'm going to be looking at my phone from time to time. It's not that I'm I'm distracted. It's because I'm looking to see if anybody has comments and they'd like to ask questions. Because of the way we're doing this version of live, um, it could be a little bit tough. But if you, if you want to, it's just complicated. But if you want to leave a comment below, I'm going to try to catch those and ask Larissa those questions that you have. Love to answer those. And I also want to just uh, just let you know, so she's got some lighting issues. That's why she looks like she's using some kind of a Snapchat filter. Uh. It's so annoying. I tried to fix it. I apologize. <laughs> no sweat. The content is what's most important. So you so you help people, especially those that you feel like are doing good. And, and Larissa's doing good in the world. You know, in fact, I was just on her podcast a while back uh, called Queen Refined. And uh, she talks about, gives tips to um, uh, pageant folks, but pageant people, what, what do you call pageant? Yeah, <laughs> tell tell us that. about that. <laughs> uh, most of the time we call, you know, we amongst ourselves call each other pageant sisters, but, mm. um, you know, contestants, uh, you know, gotcha. you know, it's, it's kind of our sport. <laughs> it's a way gotcha. to get there and, yeah. you know, um, because I'm, a little bit older and married it's you know helps make friends within um you know it's harder when you're a mom and you're trying to get out and, and be around other people and to get out of your sweatpants and look pretty sometimes <laughs> <laughs> don't i know it <laughs> i'm wearing sweatpants right now as far as yeah, you know right. <laughs> <laughs> so um you know, and what, you know, the thing, interesting thing too, folks, what I found interesting is when I was on her show, we talked about uh, self-esteem a lot because, you know, a lot of folks actually get into the pageants to increase their self-esteem. So this may be a totally different image of what you think of as pageant contestants, a really great way to build the self-esteem, right, Larissa? Oh, absolutely. That's what's funny. I think that that's the biggest deception is, you know, I get a lot of, don't, don't you find this degrading to women? I, I, it's the most empowering thing I've ever done in my entire life. It's changed my life. It's actually even helped my marriage because I feel better about myself. It yeah. makes relationships better around me, not just, you know, my, uh, my romantic relationships, but my friendships as well. I just feel better about myself and it's all because I want to, instead of doing it because someone told me to, it's because I want to. Nice. Nice. So, so as uh, as an entrepreneur, artist, those kind of things, you know, I'll tell you. So one of the things that I noticed, um, and it was funny, it was just like this epiphany I had, Larissa, years ago. It it just occurred to me as I'm watching some, as I remember back, I used to watch, like I used to watch hypnotists on on the Ricky Lake show and stuff like this back in the '90s, and I mean, yeah. And so, and it occurred to me one time, I was like, you know what, these folks that are on TV, I don't know that they're necessarily the best in the world. 
or even in their state or something, but for some reason they got on the TV or radio or, or whatever, and that elevates them. And now people recognize them as an expert and then they want to work with them, of course. And I've, I've found this with my kids need a uh, hypnotist video. People, you know, they're, they're like, but I want to work with you. And I'm like, well, 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 but I want to work with you. It's because they saw that video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you, can you kind of comment on that? Is that, is that, uh, is that a fair statement? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at Dr. Phil. He got his own show based on being on Oprah all the time. Right. And yeah. he became a sex expert because of being on Oprah all the time. And I think ultimately, I don't think you're necessarily a better expert just because you're on TV, but you're more well known. Right. And if someone like Oprah I mean, likes you and will vouch for you, there's probably something that you have to say that's important. And yeah. that's not always the case. I don't know about Ricky Lake or not, but uh, <laughs> I do know that if if you're good enough to be recognized by these people, then there definitely adds credibility. Absolutely. I think so. So, yeah, I mean, you can't just be some schlub. Uh, there's got to be something there that they're, that they're going to. Okay. Unless you're on maybe Springer or something, I don't know. But anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> so probably are a schlub. <laughs> right. So, so I will not appear on your show, Jerry. <laughs> maybe talk to me. <laughs> Call my people. <laughs> so, uh, so Larissa. So obviously, the very best thing that we could do as an artist, an entrepreneur, you know, hypnotist, whatever, if we wanted to to uh, build our credibility, build build you know, build our brand and everything, is to hire. A publicist like you, when we're first starting out, that may not be uh, possible economically. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so we're going to go into some of the things that, that you can do, uh, maybe on your own, and uh, and then. Uh, but I'd like to start off with, you know, what is the real advantage of working with a publicist to, to fork out that money and uh, and have somebody else take care of it for you? Ultimately, it's connections. I mean, hmm. I. Think I think most things can be done by other people, but for me, being in the industry for 17 years, my list of connections is, is very big, and I have relationships with these people. So it's easier for me to contact someone um, from a television show or a newspaper to start to help my clients get to that level because those people trust me because they've worked with me before. And ultimately, that's I would say that's the difference between being, well, I mean, that and time, obviously, it does take a lot of time. I mean, depending on what you're working on, it can be a full-time job just to do publicity. I think it was, I can't remember who said, I think it was Warren Buffett who said if he only had a dollar left, he would spend it on PR. I can't remember mm. who it was. Someone, someone that level, I need to remember who it was. Mm -hmm. But um, it actually might have been Bill Gates. I think it was Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. um, who said if he, he would spend his last dollar on public relations because ultimately it's going to be the best way to promote yourself in a positive light. Or if there's something negative going on, fix whatever's happening uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to make it more positive. Yeah, I get And you know what? I get that totally because, yeah, I mean, and if, if you're out there and you're, you think about this, if you get your, even in your business, you get a call or an email from somebody that you don't know and they're saying, hey, I'm the world's greatest hypnotist. You should have me on your show. <laughs> what are they going to say? Like, oh, great. Thanks. We'll get back to you. Right. Uh, or they say uh, unsubscribe. Right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, just having those kind of connections. And here's the thing, too. Even just having someone else to toot your horn for you. It's, oh, it's, it's a lot better for somebody else to go. Oh, Jim is amazing. Rather than me going, Jim is amazing. You know, I mean, it's. It's a huge, huge difference and well, shift. And they, also, they also think to themselves, wow, they're big enough that they have, have a publicist now. Ooh, you know, you're hired. You're hired right now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're ending this. I'm taking a little something myself. <laughs> I, I've had clients that have done that, and I swear I feel like I don't do much for them because they just want to say they have a publicist that they can send people to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's it's helped them, um, you know, and they pay me a little bit less, but they're like, can we just say that you're our publicist and, you know, and go mm -hmm. that direction. And it's, and it's worked for them. Um, some people know how to hustle themselves. So they were like, oh, I don't necessarily need to do all of that. But if I have someone that I can send them to, I look more credible. Awesome. Awesome. So Larissa, what are some things? So, you know, they, so the budget spent for the year. So this year we're kind of stuck. We're going to look at, at getting a publicist, you know, January one, what can we do? In the meantime, 
that's you know either low cost or free options. Uh, but well, not really free. It's time. So time is money. So um, so how much is your time worth, really, folks? I mean, you know, yeah. I I charge a fair amount per hour. So um, if I if I break it up like that, the the cost of a publicist becomes pretty pretty cheap actually. <laughs> <laughs> and also because you're because here's that thing: you can send out a hundred emails and get no response. You know, it takes you a few hours, or you can, you know, spend that, you know, an hour and, and somebody else does it and they, they get some results. So, but anyway, so if we're, we're stuck, we, we got no money, what can we do? Or very little money. I would say start locally. You know, mm -hmm. don't, don't think you're going the very first time you're, you're reaching out, you're going to be on Ellen. Um, okay. You know, I have had people who, who think that. They've even hired me thinking I can do that. And that's, that's just not possible. And so, mm -hmm. You're not going to be on Ellen. You're not going to be on Oprah. You're not going to be on those shows your first time. Start with things like podcasts. Podcasts are great. There's people out there looking for for an audience. There's there's Facebook groups you can join where people are begging for you know for guests to be on their show. It's a great way to publicize yourself. Mm. Um, contact your local newspaper. Something as simple as uh, you know, for example, I live in. Lake Stevens, our little town paper, you know, uh, we have no people, but it is something small. And, and yeah. what that leads to, I might not gain any business from being in the Lake Stevens paper. In fact, I probably won't. I, I'll be very honest. However, what I do gain is more credibility. That little blurb leads to another blurb and another blurb. And the more you put yourself out there, the more people want. Ultimately, that's the key. And what I will tell you too, press releases are great. They don't get you what you need unless you're doing a product launch. I highly recommend press releases for product mm. launches. Okay. Um, but ultimately, journalists don't like reading a long paper. If you do a press release, the press release, I say, put on a wire, which you have to pay for to put on a good mm. wire. All those free ones out there, I will tell you, not worth your time. Um, mm. It is worth paying for. You know, it could be from four to eight hundred dollars to to put your press release out there but if you have a product launch it's worth it it could be picked up um, okay. but other than that reach out directly to each individual newspaper television show you can find the basic contact information that says press inquiries or or mm -hmm. things like that you just google it you can find it and you can send it won't be directly to the the right person you might not have that relationship but they will probably read it. And the shorter you make it, the better. Um, they don't like attachments because they're probably not going to order uh, open your attachment. If they want more information, they will contact you and ask for more. Mm, good info. So good make info. a very simple mm -hmm. paragraph that is very concise but gets as much information as possible. I would say that's the best way. You, like you said before, you're probably going to have to send to 100 places before you get something picked up. But then if you do get something picked up next time, it'll probably only take 50 contacts. Mm -hmm. right. So each little thing adds up. Uh, I think podcasts are a great way. Blogs, reaching mm -hmm. out to bloggers that, that uh, are specific into your industry, that's another great way to do it. And have if you have a website, add a press page to your website and mm -hmm. include all of that. Even if you think it's insignificant, they don't oppress. They want to see that other people are interested in you. In fact, a client I'm working with right now, uh, or a client that I'm helping right now, um, they're interested in having her as a keynote and they asked for, they want to see work that she's done. If she's been on a podcast to see how she speaks. So even that little thing, um, that might've been a podcast is going to be more beneficial than she happened to be on the cover of a magazine. That magazine doesn't do her any good as a keynote speaker. So mm. that, that um, podcast she did was a lot more beneficial to help her get that keynote. You know, that makes a lot of sense. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I've, I take for a year now, I've been meaning to put a media page on my, on my website. It's, it's going to the top of my list. Um, uh, you know, I actually talked to a, I, I took a workshop from another hypnotist who had, has, has reached really nationwide status. I mean, worldwide status now. And it really just started by, um, it was it was just one little local television station thing, and then that got picked up by the by the main like the ABC, you know, the, the nationwide one. And, and next thing you know, 
tripling his rates um, for for shows and <laughs> hypnotherapy, and because it was he had to because you know couldn't couldn't even keep up with all the work, right? And so, um, and then just becomes super well known. And obviously, if you see this person on Ellen, you want to work with the person you saw on there. Absolutely. So. Um, and because I've, I've tried, I've told people, you know, I told them like, well, I'm, you know, I'm super busy. These are my rates. Um, I can't, I can't work with you um, for a couple of weeks or something. They're like, no, that's okay. I'll wait because I want to work with you because I, I offer. I say, you know, I can refer to someone else. But it's funny that connection, once they see you on something or hear you, you're the expert to them. Absolutely. And they feel like they know you now. They've seen <laughs> True. They've now had their reference, you know. By right. Telephone. You know, television, you've now been referred to them in some way or another. So, absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense. Oh, I apologize. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Newspaper can be just as effective, uh, especially like you said, what, what happened with your friend going nationwide. That happens more often with local papers going national. So, it, mm. what will happen is if the AP picks up something from something as small as our, we have a, a local paper here in Seattle called The Stranger. It's very popular here in Seattle, but outside of Seattle, a lot of people don't know about this newspaper. However, the AP loves The Stranger, and the AP loves really? to pick, pick up those small articles. And then once it's on, you know, with the Associated Press, it's national. And it could be, you know, in the New York Times, it could be on Yahoo, it could be everywhere. So those little papers can, you know, it's not going to be probably picked up from, you know, the Renton Reporter, but, you know, a, a newspaper big enough that you can I, I suggest this is kind of something new. I've never said this before, but suggest going to look at, go to the Associated Press, find out where, where they're picking up articles from. Find mm -hmm. the smaller places that they're picking up from, because now you know that those are the papers they're reading. Gotcha. I'm going to take some notes here, Larissa. Yeah. <laughs> We've already talked. I'm going to be working with Larissa very soon. Yeah. Uh, and she's already helped me with some stuff. You know, I mean, already gotten me some, uh, you know, we've worked together a little bit. She's already gotten me some, some radio and that kind of thing. And that, uh, like she said, you know, it all helps because, um, again, if you think about it, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're working for the Ellen show or something, do you want to bring somebody in? I mean, whether they wrote a book or they're the, they're the best known conference speaker for, for whatever you do or anything, they want to make sure you're not going to make a jack <laughs> ask of yourself, right? <laughs> You're not going to embarrass yourself, embarrass the show, embarrass Ellen. They're going to have to scrap the whole episode. You know, I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Because there are some weird people out there. No. We know one. <laughs> so true. I've had more than one. Uh, but, and, and, and I'll tell you, a lot of times people that, that hire publicists sometimes don't need them, but want them. And they want to be famous. And they want to be famous for, for nothing. And... That also is something I've had to learn to weed through, is make sure what you're trying to get publicity for is actually worthy. You know, I, I will tell you, um, for example, social media influencers. It's a, it's a great lucrative business. It's very popular. It's, it, it works really well. But it's a don't expect just because you're a social media influencer you're going to get press. I will tell you the press actually combats that. So being an influencer doesn't automatically make you, you know, tie you together. They they actually feel like influencers are almost taking away from what they're doing. So you have to do something pretty great as an influencer to get that publicity. What do you think about some of these services like um, like radio guest list? Um, are you familiar with that? Yes, yeah, I, th I think those are great. I think those are great ways to get on to, to different different places. I think I think you can do a lot of the things for free. If they're asking you to pay, um, you're probably going to get the same same thing. A good example is I actually myself signed up for something similar for public relations. And it was put in your bid to get clients. And I paid for this, this website. It looked amazing. I signed up. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is totally worth the $10 a month I pay. Except there's zero instruction. They just give me a list. They don't tell me what I need to do, how, what these places need for submission. So I started submitting what I thought was a, you know, good proposal. And I would get back, this isn't what we asked for. Ah, I don't know what you asked for. I didn't know. I wasn't given that information. 
So right. you know, do a little bit of research to make sure what you're paying for gives you everything you need and isn't going to give you something that you could just do yourself. Okay, great. All right, what can you tell us about, so what kind of things should we have either on our website or be available? Say I say I get booked or I get a, I get an inquiry from somebody and they say, hey, we, we think we might want to have you on our podcast or TV show. Um, what kind of things should we have available to give them? You want a bio. Uh, make okay. sure your bio is, is short. Um, you can have a longer bio too because, for example, if you become a keynote speaker, they're going to want a, a long bio. So it's good to have a long bio and a short bio. Okay. If you need a headshot, you're always going to be asked for a headshot. And a resume. A resume is a great thing to have. They don't always ask for it, but sometimes it's nice to just send it over because mm. then they can say things that might not be in your short bio that have been, was more interesting for them and something that they might want to discuss that you didn't think was as interesting as they thought was interesting. So it has mm. a little bit more uh, tie-in. And uh, sometimes they will ask for you know videos that you may have, any press that you already have. And just send links. Don't send the right, you know, attachments with your article if you wrote it. Just send a link to the article that was written. That's the best way to do it. You know, something I would say too. You know, I said, especially I found this to be true with with podcasts and stuff. Because let's face it, a lot of us podcasters, we're not professionals. We don't do this for a living, and so uh, we may not even ask. Sometimes we, you know, I've, I've had people not even ask me for my bio or anything like that. They're like, "Oh my God, you're this. Come on the show." And so I don't think anything about it, and. I, I go on the show and they put crazy stuff <laughs> for the, for the, because and, they go to your website, they grab some, they copy and paste some stuff or, or uh, maybe they choose a, a photo, you know, that you wouldn't want to use for it. Right. Uh, yes. I've had that. Yes. <laughs> um, and then also I think, and I don't know if this is really important or not, but what I've, what I've started doing too is, is sending my, my, uh, my usual hashtags. So I will say things, you know, I will put, I will send over, these are my usual hashtags. Obviously, they don't have to use them, but but if they're going to use hashtags, these are the ones well, that, that might. That's a great idea. That's a, I haven't even thought of that. That's wonderful. That's a great idea. And I found, you know, I so I did, uh, for my TEDx talk, I think, uh, and I, I didn't think about it soon enough, but I'm afraid that they may not have used the hashtags that I think would have got the, the, the most momentum. And, and, uh, and so... You know, I mean, hashtags, oh, my goodness, especially on, like, in uh, with the social media, YouTube, that kind of stuff, they can make or break a video, you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, so, especially on YouTube. Yeah. And so I always I always say, you know, please, you know, send two or three hashtags that you normally use. Um, and, again, you don't have to say you have to use these, but it's available. The other thing, too, is your website and your contact info, because I've had, I've had them, like, I've, God, I've had the first round of things like go up and there was no contact information for me. So I would read the thread on YouTube and they're going, how do I get a hold of this person? How do I get, and it, you know, it's, uh, so I would say, you know, send everything, whether they ask for it or not. Absolutely. And, and you know, they'll use what they want, but the contact right. info is, is extremely important. And I yeah. mean, it's, it's also helpful for the podcaster because they don't have to worry about, people contacting them to ask and wasting their time to send it to every single person who asks. So it's beneficial for everybody. And what I would say too, you know, and, and uh, I've been guilty of this and I'm trying to do better. I'm actually putting together, uh, well, I actually have it saved now, like in a, in a Trello file. Uh, Trello is a, no, a note taking thing that you can use if anybody doesn't know about it, check it out. Uh, but I've actually saved now my, my long bio, my short bio, all this information, because I'll tell you, from somebody who produces podcasts, it is so frustrating when you're waiting around for someone to send that information and you want to promote the show. One of the things I loved about Larissa, I mean, it was there like, I think the same day I said, hey, can I get your stuff? And it was there, you know? Um, I've had people that I'm, I'm sort of begging and pleading, please, can I? And I've had to reschedule the podcast because I'm like, I have nothing to say about you. So, you know. Um, As a publicist, that is my biggest pet peeve because it's something I have to have all of that for them for everything. And when I start working with a client, it's like pulling teeth to get a bio. Oh my gosh, no one likes writing bios. I get yeah. it. I hate writing bios too. No one, no one likes to fluff themselves up. I mean, it is a difficult thing to do. And mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's something that, like I, I tell people, send it to me, and I'll I'll fluff it for you. Just if you send me your resume, I'll, I'll create your bio for you. But even getting it, getting a resume sometimes has been. Um, I, I've had one client that. I, I, I've 
worked with for a long time, and I still haven't got a list of all of the media that <laughs> she's done before oh, me. Gosh. And so, it, it, and she's busy. It's not a, you know, a situation. Oh, yeah. Where, you know, Absolutely. She, she's doing it out of spite or anything like that. It's So, it, it, I ended up having to research that myself. And, you know, things could, could be missed, you know, important things that, uh, you know, would be unfortunate. So, it's just, it's just making sure the, the more content you can give, the better it makes you look. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, you know, really, if, um, if you just right now went and typed up, a, uh, if it's a short bio, what are we thinking? Like a few sentences, five, six, three to four, three to four. Oh, three to four. Wow. I need to shorten my short bio. Okay. Yes, good, yes. good. I would say three to four. Uh, I mean, five to six is fine too, you know, depending on, where you're from mine might, might, might actually be five um, okay. but there's some places i will tell you that won't want that won't allow you to get more than that especially the bigger the show um the bigger you go the less they want oh so, wow because they don't care about you they care about their true so it's right. not about publicizing you so yeah. um the smaller places are trying to help you and want to help themselves the the bigger you go the less they care about you and so um Try to, if, if you can get it to three to four sentences, it's only going to benefit you because you're going to control it so they don't chop it up for you. Love that. I love that. And really, that's what it's about. It's about having that control. Because I, I got to tell you, people, please trust me. If, I mean, if they, I, I've had crazy, ridiculous stuff come out, especially with hypnosis, because they say, they'll say like the hypnotism guy or uh, things like this or, uh, it's it's and it's not their fault. They just don't know. But it, it doesn't portray me in, a, in the in the light that I want to be portrayed. Um, so I think that's that's super important. Something else that I would say, and I wish, oh, I wish so much. If you do get offered an opportunity that you have any inkling where you you could blow up, and I found this with my kids meet a hypnotist video. When that thing dropped, I got hundreds of emails. I got hundreds of emails. And most of them were, I mean, they were not they were mostly kids going, hey, I love that, you know, and all this. It was very cute. Um, but there were some there were some stuff that could have really turned into big stuff, and I just couldn't even get to it. I'd also, I hadn't, I, hadn't, I would, so if, if it were me, I would try to block off some time right after it drops, a week or two even, uh, so that you can be available if you need to get staff. Um, also, the, oh, this killed me. My, my online store was not functioning at the time. There was a problem with it, and I hadn't checked it. And so who knows how many, who knows how many sales I lost because of that. Yeah. So, wow, that was, it, yeah. yeah that, and that brings up a good point. If you are going to be, uh, this is actually, I'm so glad you brought that up because this is something that I, I have to discuss with my clients often. Um, make sure everything, your website is, is up to date before you do anything, even if it's a small podcast, make sure that everything is working because Ultimately, you want it to lead to something else. And if, if you aren't prepared, it might not go anywhere. But the more prepared you are, the more likely you're going to have it lead to something else. And, you know, uh, more often now, I'm also doing, uh, I'm doing what I've started doing was sending along also a, uh, uh, a link to, to get on to opt in to my, to my list, you know, whether it's by offering a free hypnosis download or, or something like that, so that, so the people they don't necessarily just go to your website; they actually opt into your to your list and get on your in your funnel and and all that good stuff. So I'm learning, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, you're, doing well. you're doing you're doing better than me. I keep watching this video. I'm like my camera lighting's bad. I'm shaky. So I, I will explain. I want to say to your audience: my my kids are on uh, summer break, and I work from home, and we happen to have an exchange student here as well. Oh, so it's kind of chaotic in my house right now. So I'm literally in my bedroom sitting on my bed with this propped up on my lap so that is why this is normally would be a little bit better i have an office but the exchange student is actually stay that's her bedroom right now so it's everything's kind of chaotic uh right now so i do want to apologize for that real quick <laughs> Uh, I do want to say, anybody, speaking of, of lists and stuff, if you if you have any interest at all in, in hypnosis, I invite you to go over to my, my website, uh, jimkellnerhypnotist.com, uh, uh, slash, whatever, the backslash, I think it's forward, forward slash, uh, free dash hypnosis. You can grab a, a hypnosis download. And if you're a hypnotist watching 
and you're having some trouble with this, go over and join my, my group, the Launch Your Hypnosis Career Now. Larissa, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Uh, so I have a website. It's bluereadcommunications, with an S, dot com. Mm-hmm. Red communications. Dot com, and you can reach me at Larissa, L-A-R-I-S-S-A, at BlueRedCommunications.com. That's the best way. You can also find me, um, you know, on, on Instagram. My my uh, handle is Larissa Cup, so L-A-R-E-E-S-Y-C-U. So, um, but my website's the best way, best way to get to Yeah. Uh, so let me just kind of wrap up what we talked about. I took some notes. I'll probably miss some stuff. You can kind of fill in what I miss. So start local. Uh, you know, there's always there's always some podcasts that, you, that people are looking for podcast guests. Um, so you can you join the groups. Larissa talked about there's some groups on Facebook where you can you can join and they're, they're looking for podcasts. There's also that radio guest list. Like she said, don't don't probably don't need to pay for it. There's also something called a help a reporter out. H A R O. Um, yes. I've had some luck with that. I've had a couple, a couple of things come from that. Um, but it's, I mean, see, here's the thing with, with, I gotta tell you, with these things, like I had, you have to read this stupid thing every single day and hope to find something. Hire Larissa. You don't have to do that anymore. So, um, <laughs> um, what did we talk about? It's something about press inquiries. What was, oh yeah. So you can, you can go to the, their local radio station, TV station, look where they, they say press inquiries and you can send them some info the um, and uh, you want to do uh, you can look at the Associated Press see what they're they're looking at what they might share see I didn't I wasn't paying any attention at all to Prince so I'm glad we had this talk I'm like yeah Prince dead why would I bother you know Prince is definitely not dead I mean it's just blogs so it is different but uh, if you think about it social media revolves around Prince so oh on Facebook everything you're seeing is articles being shared Duh. Yeah. right. I had I totally forgot about that point. I, I just think of you know picking up the stranger. I don't think about going online and yes, gotcha. Yes. Okay, yeah, and very important. Get that get that in fact today. If you got time today, tomorrow, something like that, get your info ready. So if somebody calls up or something says, "Hey, want you on the podcast?" You can go. Great. Here's my info. Again, what we talked about. Larissa said a short bio. By short, we mean she means like three sentences if you can get it to there. If you need five or six, maybe, um, but you go for three sentences. A long bio, maybe more in detail. Uh, headshot, good headshot, not some crappy thing that you did a selfie of. Spend a few bucks and get a good one if you can. And make sure it looks like you. Uh, a lot of times oh. I to pull my pageant photo for, yeah. for my professional. I'm like, no, 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 don't use my pageant photo. That is, I'm all glammed up. That's not how I look. You know, don't don't use that. Make sure your photo looks like you. You know, and that's not even as bad. I've, I've gotten, I've got. Well, when I was doing casting. Uh, for for um, for acting roles, I would have people show up and did not look even remotely like they're because it's from like five years ago or maybe somebody used a some kind of a filter or something. You know, people are using these these look younger filters now, smooths out everything. No, that's great if you want to try and find a date, I guess. But but uh, <laughs> you know, if you're you want to know what you're like, so we got the headshot. Get a good headshot. Um, uh, what else do we say? Oh, the resume. I didn't even know about the resume. I'm glad we had this talk. I gotta gotta make a note of that. Do my resume in there, um, and then, uh, then you said if they want more information, see, I think that's one of the deals I've been I've been messing up is I'm I'm sending them all these links. Hey, look at my video. Look at this. And look at that. And and look where I did this. So so maybe just wait until I ask for it, huh? Yeah, depending on the size. You know, if you're doing a podcast or something local, they probably will want all of that. That's that benefits you tremendously. But if you're if you're trying to reach out to you know ABC, NBC, something like that. They don't want all of that. They links are fanta- a fantastic way to get very little information in to to your email. Uh, just link to everything, and then put a little, you know, side note that this is what this is. This is what this. You could put like five links, and now they can find out information about you without you putting it all into the email. They don't give them as little to read as possible. But if they want more information, you've now provided it through a link. And usually, if there's an article that you were included in, it's going to be a fairly long article that's going to have more information about you anyway. So hold on. So I think I misunderstood then. So you're saying in that initial one, where you in the when you reach out to them for the first time, you could go ahead and, and put some links in there. Yes, less okay. words. Uh, less words, more no links. Attachments and no, no attachments. attachments. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm learning so much, Larissa. Yes. <laughs> really, I'm, I'm all about a tag. Look at this show your, photo. Look your email is probably going to be rejected by by that organization. If really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, not mine specifically. You're talking about if it has a task. So I'm yes. like, whoa, what did I do already? Yes. <laughs> now, okay. now, once you reach to a person, um, those people will, you know, sometimes ask for attachments. Can you send me a headshot? Can you send me this? And that's what I usually do. But that's after they've already decided they want you on the show. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we actually have a, we have some questions here. If you got a couple, you got a couple of minutes, Larissa? Yeah, yeah. Excellent, great. So Jennifer Wild uh, says that she agrees with the statement of Larissa Long um, that it's important to make sure your photo reflects who you are and what you look like. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, she also says, what do you think about LinkedIn? I, I love LinkedIn. Um, I know that I've made some pretty good connections there as far as jobs i've actually found zip recruiter is a little bit more effective at, at looking for, for jobs but um linkedin it is great if you use the proper hashtags going back to mm -hmm. what jim said earlier mm -hmm. hashtags I, I have found if i don't hashtag on linkedin i get no response but if i put and and they're not necessarily the hashtags related to what you wrote it's more about the industry that you're writing about mm. okay um that makes sense Okay, so you so you do you write up something instead of me saying like you know Phoenix hypnotist I would put you know how to uh, whatever start smoking <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah. okay what they're looking for they're looking for the content not not where you're at or what you're doing you know that type of thing so. yeah great great thanks so much oh we got another looks like we've got another oh she says thank you <laughs> welcome Jennifer thanks for watching thank really do friend. appreciate it. Um, you know, if, uh, if, if you're out there watching this, could you please give this a share, give it a like, a comment? We really do appreciate it. It helps it to get seen and gets more information out there. And I got to tell you, one of the things that I find, uh, and I know I, it's, I start off this way, uh, you, you wouldn't believe it now, but, but when I first started uh, my business, I was very shy about social media. I wasn't out there at all. And I have found that, you know, if you're not tooting your own horn until you can get a publicist, you're not going to get seen. You're not going to get opportunities because nobody knows what you're doing. They don't know who you are. So please get out there. Let people know what you're doing and, and who you are. Absolutely. Um, so Larissa, once again, you're, how, do we, how do we get a hold of you? We want to hire you. How do we get a hold of you? Uh, Blueredcommunications.com. Larissa at Blueredcommunications.com. And, uh, yeah, you can always bug Jim so you can get 100 more emails. I'm just kidding. That's right. Yeah. Shoot me a message. I'll be happy to forward it over to her. Thank great. you so much, Jim. This is great. Thank you, Larissa. It was really great talking to you and uh, really great, great information. Uh, well worth the time. And we got in uh, only 37 minutes. Woohoo! So that's that's really cool. Hope, uh, hope people will watch. Uh, everyone, I am uh, I'm uh, hypnotist Jim Kellner. And if you'd like more information about me and what I do, you can head over to jimkellnerhypnotist.com. Love to connect with you. And uh, find me on social media, Jim Kellner. Um, I think that's it. Take care. Be well. Be awesome. And remember, your success is my success. <laughs>